earlier this month, a drone flying into the Kremlin in what appeared to be a major security breach for Russia. Theories on what exactly happened span from it being a splinter group inside Russia to the video being a total fabrication. But now U.S. sources tell CNN intelligence agencies in the United States may have some evidence that Ukraine may be behind the attack. The U.S. has, of course, stood staunchly behind Ukraine since Russia's invasion last year. So tonight we ask, could U.S. support for Ukraine be affected? I want to go to um, Natasha Bertrand uh, with the latest from Washington. They use the wording, maybe responsible right that ukraine may be responsible for this attack what is the intelligence telling us right now yeah eleni so this is a low confidence assessment by the u.s intelligence community which yeah. really means that they don't have enough information to say really definitively one way or another who actually carried out this attack but based on things like who would be motivated to do this intercepted communications uh, amongst ukrainians pointing the finger at each other and importantly signals intelligence and intercepted communications from russian officials that don't seem to indicate any kind of state-sponsored false flag attack or planning when it came to this drone attack all points uh, to U.S. officials to the conclusion that perhaps this was a Ukrainian group. But again, no definitive proof of that yet. And importantly, U.S. officials don't believe that this was actually an assassination attempt, as Russian officials uh, have alleged. They believe that this was likely carried out by a Ukrainian group without any kind of direction uh, from the central government there in Kyiv, from President Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, but look, another thing contributing to this U.S. assessment is that it wouldn't be the first time that the U.S. has seen kind of Ukrainian groups carry out operations like this on Russian soil, right? Uh, the U.S. intelligence community pointed the finger at uh, Ukrainians uh, for the uh, car bombing in Moscow last year. Other kinds of operations on U.S. soil leaked Pentagon documents uh, have suggested that the Ukrainians have actively planned to uh, launch attacks and operations on Russian soil. So they they don't necessarily find this surprising. But at the same time, you know, this is not necessarily going to impact American support for Ukraine because there's no sign. There are no signs yet that the Ukrainians are using any kind of U.S. aid or U.S. provided weaponry to actually launch these kinds of operations. Those two drones that we saw hit the Kremlin earlier this month, they were not U.S. provided. They were small, relatively lightweight drones that, embarrassingly for the Kremlin, did manage to bypass Russia's uh, air defense system. So the U.S. still kind of uh, looking into who exactly carried this out. But for all intents and purposes, they do not believe that this was an attempt to kill uh, Vladimir Putin himself, Eleni. Yeah, I mean, really important. And you mentioned, you know, whether this could affect the U.S.'s support for Ukraine. As we receive more information, I guess the big question will be, what equipment, what drone they used, um, whoever used this, that, that would be an important distinction to make. That's exactly right. And these commercial, dr these drones that we saw are pretty common. They're, they're kind of, it was kind of like a lightweight commercial drone that was used. And that's why U.S. officials are also considering the possibility that pro-Ukrainian Russians even inside Russia could have carried this out, perhaps some Russians who were disillusioned uh, with the Kremlin and its war in Ukraine. So not even necessarily uh, the Ukrainians themselves. But the all of these motivations and the fact, again, that the Russians have been trying to figure out how this actually happened rather than speaking amongst themselves, for example, about uh, some kind of false flag operation, that has led the U.S. to, to consider the possi possibility that perhaps yet again uh, this was uh, a Ukrainian group uh, just essentially trying to troll the Kremlin, Eleni. All right, Natasha Bertrand, thank you very much for that. Well, I want to bring in Vera Michelin Shapiro. She's a lecturer at War Studies Department at King's College in London. Um, great to have you on, Vera. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on this new U.S. intelligence about um, what we've seen? Uh, importantly, the, the wording is that it may have been the Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the U.S., uh, I mean, this U.S. intelligence is confirming what is um, quite a logical conclusion from everything we know um, so far about this attack. And that is that it was um, 
probably not done by the Russians. It was probably not a false flag operation. And that we could see from their response. Yes. So when we're watching them, when we're watching how they responded, uh, when we're watching how they later framed the blame kind of uh, and framed it as an assassination attempt. So kind of trying to go overboard, but also showing that they were quite confused at, f at first and then they decided on their line. So everything that we saw on the day and in the following in the following days, when they were still kind of very actively um, engaged with this with this subject, um, because obviously the news cycle in Russia is very um, is very fast moving with everything that's been going on. So yeah, it's I mean this this is a logical conclusion that it is some kind of um, Ukraine yeah. work that by a, possibly a Ukrainian group or Russian sympathizers of Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. So you know we've we've kind of narrowed it down to the possibilities here as the U.S. is still gathering intelligence, which is, is important as we wait for more facts to come through. Uh, but the U.S., of course, has been one of the big supporters from a monetary perspective, aid um, in terms of weapons being supplied as well. Um, as we just heard from Natasha Bertrand, important to note what type of drone was used, whether it was supplied by the United States and whether that would then hamper support um, of the U.S. towards Ukraine in the future. Do you think that relationship now is going to come into question? I find it hard to believe that that particular attack would um, would bring into question the relationship between the U.S. and Ukraine, which is now has has been um, quite long uh, term. The Ukrainians have shown um, that they are that this relationship is very important for them. I think it was um, if it was uh, used by a Ukrainian group or even by sympathizers. I think it was important that these drones, once they were, once images were um, were shown, uh, it's pretty obvious that these are drones that are easily, um, that, that it's quite easy to um, buy those drones, to use those drones. And so that kind of moves this whole question, it moves that aside. Now, having said that, questions about how Ukraine um, and what kind of actions Ukraine take in Russia, um, not speaking specifically about this attack with the drones that we see, that is a lingering question. That is a lingering issue, yeah. um, primarily because of um, fears of escalation with Russia. Yeah, and that's a really good point, right, whether the, the war or the fight is going to move beyond Ukraine's borders. I mean, we saw what happened in Belgorod, for example, obviously very different situation there. We have seen some um, targets within Russia uh, in the past before. Um, what is your assessment about how this could possibly play out. I think one of the things that is surprising people as well is just how vulnerable Russia is and perhaps how unprepared it is for possible attacks mm -hmm. on its own soil. Mm -hmm. So I think the Ukrainians were actually, I think on that point, the Ukrainians are actually proving that um, their line is probably the correct one, which is A, that Russia is quite vulnerable within its own territory, that the border is quite vulnerable, and that the defense, air defense systems are not working as well as they should. So actually, they, what the Ukrainians are showing everyone is that it is possible. The second thing that they're showing, and that is there is a divide within what will cause an escalation with Russia. And obviously, the biggest fear always is nuclear escalation. So the Russian doctrine on nuclear escalation is so fuzzy. Um, and they do include a, a nuclear uh, use uh, due to conventional uh, threat or conventional aggression, not threat, conventional aggression against Russia. But what the Ukrainians are showing, actually, that the Russians have very little appetite for that kind of escalation or for an escalation with the West. Yeah. So it, they're, they're proving to us that the Russians are aware that they can't really escalate this uh, into a war with the West. Vera, great to have you on. Thank you so much.